Hello Storm Sheet Trainee. This is a short preparation video for your next CSNA training, which is the Certified Storm Sheet Network Administrator Training. And in this short video, I'm going to guide you how to be fully prepared for the training and for the labs that will be performed on virtual environments. So before you begin, you need to know that uh, it's going to be a three days of fun and focus, and I'm saying so because during the three days, it's going to be starting from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. with uh, short breaks and also lunch break in between. And uh, in this duration also, we will be uh, covering the concepts and it will be followed by a practical lab that will be performed on uh, the virtual environment. And also in the following slide, I will extend to you the lab architecture and uh, then how to be prepared for that. Of course, it will be really an advantage and good uh, if you have uh, good knowledge of TCP and IP. And you have to be equipped with a laptop with Windows operating system installed. Uh, you must have administrative privilege on your laptop because uh, during the practices you need to may maybe install uh, some software, uh, maybe stop the firewall, do some configuration on your laptop, you should have uh, enough privilege to do so. And uh, also, you should have uh, this software installed already in your laptop, so you need a Firefox browser, you need a POTI for an, uh, or any equivalent SSH uh, client, so you can have SSH connection to the firewall and perform some uh, commands. And also the uh, WinSCP, which is uh, a Windows version of the SCP, the Secure Copy Protocol, where you can copy files between your laptop and uh, firewall as well. Wireshark, where we can uh, have a look at some packet captures. And also, uh, you should have the VMware workstation or maybe VirtualBox, uh, where you will need to install the Stormsheet virtual appliance and also uh, there will be a, a virtual a small virtual server in fact that will be helpful during the training so just for you to understand the architecture each trainee will be assigned a company and this company will be uh, represented by a letter so there will be uh, the first trainee will be company a and then there will be company B, C, and D, and etc. So uh, also it goes for E, F, G, H, as much as we need. So the differences here is that each trainee has his own firewall. And uh, in the firewall, as uh, uh, you may know, that this is, let's say, your uh, company is A, and you have your own firewall, and this firewall is connected to three interfaces. So one interface is connected directly to your laptop and as you can see it has the subnet 192.168.1.254 uh, Of course this will be configured later, it's not going to be the, the case uh, but you just need to understand how all the labs will be performed. So what is different between company A for example and company B in this uh, network which is connected directly between, between the trainee laptop and between the firewall as you can see here also, it's connected to the firewall on this interface. Company D is also connected to the firewall on this interface. But as you may see, that the only difference that we have here is that this subnet, which is represented for each company with a different submit number. So as you can see here, this is 192.168.1. This one is the 2. C is the 3. D is the 4. I think we are missing a dot here. Oh, anyway, and also E is uh, 5 and so on. So each local network of the firewall is actually represented by this letter. So A and this number which is 192.168.1 and uh, it's a slash 24 subnet so these subnets are actually different and for the external side of the firewall we have this red line. The red line here Let's take example here on C, for example. So the red line here in C is connected to a public uh, IP, which is 192.36.253.30. In this case, for C, for D, it's 40. For A, it's 10. And I hope it's obvious that also for B, it's 20. So from inside, this is the network. And from outside, this is how... The subnet is going to be so this is 
of course going to be explained uh, entirely uh, during the training uh, however, we have an option to have the, uh, another a third subnet which can be used as a DMZ uh, where we can have our servers hosted but in the admin training they will be represented uh, in the same subnet as of your internal network so we have a DNS, web, FTP and mail they are all on the same subnet so 1.10, 1.11, 1.12 and 1.13 now the same will be for C for example but the DNS will be as maybe it's clear when we see when we say for example for C it's dot three so the DNS for C is going to be different than the DNS of A is only in this octet where we will have three instead of one so DNS will be for C 192.168.3.10 and 3.11 is the web 3.12 is FTP and 3.13 is the mail for C it will be the same for B, the same for D. Of course, I'm going to extend this, this to you during the training uh, uh, and you will be able to have all the configuration. This is just an idea. So the, the reason for explaining this uh, short slide is to tell you that you need to configure your virtual firewall to represent this architecture. And as you can see, that all the external interfaces as well, so this firewall of A and firewall of B and C and D, they are all connected in the red networks into uh, a switch and this is switch is connected to one firewall, one centralized firewall here and this firewall is actually the instructor firewall, the trainer firewall. So this firewall will have an IP of 192.36.253.254 and this is going to be the default gateway for all of the other firewalls and again this is going to be explained and covered during the training. So the point that we need to know is that we need to prepare our virtual environment to represent this architecture. And in order to do so, we need to understand that your uh, laptop will have a virtual uh, software for running a virtual machines, which as we have said, uh, VMware. Of course, you need to be uh, like ready because you know sometimes uh, you, you have to at least test your VMware uh, solution at least once or maybe a virtual box depends on your choice because maybe sometimes in, in the BIOS uh, the CPU uh, configuration was not set to support the virtualization environment so there are a few tips that you need to prepare ahead just test that you are able to run a virtual machine on uh, any virtual machine you can just install for example a Windows uh, operating system for testing just to make sure that it's working now on your machine you will have a one cable connected to the, uh, to the trainer firewall of course since there are a big number for example of trainees or more than uh, one in fact so the trainer uh, firewall will be connected to a switch so we should have a network switch here so, sorry so we should have a network switch here somewhere connected in between the uh, your laptop and with the uh, trainer firewall so this switch will have only one cable connected with your laptop now what we need to do first rule is that you need to be fully focused and also for the sake of the labs we ask you to disable your wireless uh, adapter because this will cause uh, conflict when we are doing the labs and also we need you to be fully focused again so it's better to disable the wireless not to be connected to any network just to have your ethernet the built-in ethernet on your laptop to be the only thing that is connected and it should be connected to the switch which is connected to all other uh, laptops of the other trainees and as well as to the trainer firewall so the first step is to disable the wireless second is that we need to configure the virtual machine settings so we can create three virtual interfaces so we'll be creating a vmnet1 vmnet2 and vmnet3 now vmnet1 we will uh, make the configuration to be bridged with the ethernet so uh, you will have a virtual interface and this virtual interface will be totally bridged with the physical interface of your laptop okay and I will show you how to do that uh, VM net 2 which is going to be a host only network so this host only network is only uh, a private network that is not connected to anything except if you choose to be connected also to your uh, laptop itself so we have another uh, uh, interface which will be uh, this is as we said one and the second one sorry, 
The second one would be the virtual interface VMNet2. And VMNet2 will be connected to host only. So we will choose the option to have it connected to host only, and it's a private network. Then we will have a third interface, which is not actually mandatory for this training, but for the sake of the future trainings as well, uh, just to create a DMZ different subnet. So we will create VMNet3, and this VMNet3, we will make it only a private network, not connected to anything. Now, so uh, it's important also not to cause any confusion and just to make sure that uh, when we are doing the tests and the labs that uh, uh, you are not going through any different gateway or any uh, any issues. So the best thing to do is not to have any gateway configured on any of the interfaces. And this is going to be explained why during the training. But as of now, since we have disabled the wireless, so we don't worry about the wireless network, but uh, for the time being, we will be configuring only uh, an IP address for VMNet2, which is the one we will be using to configure the machine and do everything. And at the beginning, we just need to provide an IP uh, of the VMNet2 from the same firewall subnet, which also will be covered during the training. And maybe later we will need to have a gateway settings on this VMNet2. This will guarantee that since your laptop has no gateway configuration, no routing configuration on any of the interfaces except for VMNet2, that means if it's going to any destination, for example, the internet or any other destination, it's going to be only going through VMNet2, which means going through the virtual firewall that, we, that uh, you have. So let's go to uh, the Windows machine. As you can see, this is a, a normal Windows machine. And uh, we have the software of VMware Workstation. I just installed the evaluation version. It's uh, free for 14 days. I have Stormsheet uh, software, which will be also covered during the training. I have uh, the POTI for SSH. I have the WinSCP. I have also Wireshark uh, installed, and also I have Firefox. So I'm ready. Uh, I can also give you an idea about the network interfaces. Sorry. So network interfaces, you can see I have the Ethernet. I have VMNet1, I have VMNet8, and I have my wireless disabled. These are by default. Once you install the uh, uh, VMware workstation, these two virtual adapters are added. But the actual physical interface that you have is this one. Uh, it depends on your, your laptop, of course, it, it may be different. Uh, now, when we come to the VMware configuration, so I will open VMware and you can see I have here under edit, I can go to the virtual network editor, here where we create the virtual interfaces that will be used. You don't have access to configure anything, and remember that you need to have your uh, administrative privileges on your laptop so you're, you are able to modify and configure the network adapter. So I will just click here to obtain the privilege. So now I'm able to uh, load the configuration with the ability to uh, configure. So I have uh, VMNet 0, I have VMNet 1, and VMNet 8. We need to add VMNet 2 and VMNet 3 as in our example. So I, because I have VMNet 1 already, so I will add a network. It's by default following the order. So since we have 0, 1, uh, there's 8, so it will uh, continue from 2. I will just simply say add. And now also I will add another uh, uh, one, which is VM3. Let's say OK. Now remember that for VM1, we need to bridge it with the uh, Ethernet. So I will go to VM1, OK. And I will say I want this interface to be bridged. Okay, yeah, because I have already averaged here in the VMNet 0, so I will, maybe I can remove the network, or maybe I can just say, make it host only, just to have a different thing. It's good that we have some issues that you may face also, so you can know how to deal with them. So now I can easily bridge, okay. And uh, so it's only with the active interface that I have, which is the Ethernet. I have simply choose my Ethernet. If your wireless uh, adapter is active, so you will see also the wireless listed here, but we don't want that, so it has to be disabled from the beginning. 
Uh, for VM2, as you remember, we said that we needed to be host only network. Now I don't want to have any DHCP settings or any ID for the time being. I just needed to be connected to the host adapter to this, uh, to connect the a host ad uh, virtual adapter to this network. That means VM2 is a virtual network separated from anything else, but at the same time, it's connected to my uh, laptop. So anything I connect to this virtual network, it's also connected to my laptop at the same time. I will keep it as it is, okay? Uh, of course, the IP we can change later, I will show you. And also from here we can change it, but let's see how we can change it from the adapter directly. And then also I have the MN3. In the MN3, I don't want it to have a uh, DHCP service, and also I don't want to uh, have it connected to my virtual, uh, this virtual adapter to be uh, connected to the host, to the laptop. So I just simply want it this way. So just review one last time. VMNet1 is a bridge with Ethernet. VMNet2 is host only and it's connected to the local host, no problem. VMNet3 is host only, not connected to anything. So this is 3. It's, it's a host only network. Okay, it's uh, connected to VMs internal to a private network, but it's not connected to anything. Okay. So now we are good to go, and I have the uh, interfaces configured the way that I need. Now, since uh, we have choose only for VMNet2 to be uh, connected to the host, so uh, you will be able to see VMNet2, when you check here in the network adapter that you will see, I have the Ethernet, I have VMNet2 is also listed here because it's actually uh, we have choose to uh, make it connected to the host so when we are going to, to perform the labs you will see that we need to provide an IP address from the same subnet of the firewall by default the firewall IP is 1000 so I will just choose that so it will be 1000 I will give any IP I will say for example uh, 10 and uh, the subnet for the firewall is uh, slash 8 so also I will make it slash 8 and I will just save. So now, if uh, I have the firewall uh, Im implemented, so I can easily connect to the firewall. But before that, you will also be provided with two virtual machines. One machine, uh, which is the firewall, and it will be in an OVA format, and uh, which is an uh, open virtualization appliance, and also you have the Debian virtual server for labs, uh, we have two choices for uh, implementing the virtual server, and I will cover that as well. So the uh, OVA uh, file of the uh, firewall, uh, you can import it by either double click or from file import as well. So you need to uh, accept the agreement of uh, using this virtual machine. You need to provide it with a name. So you can leave it as UTM SNS virtual machine 3.4.1, and then you can import. So after we import the uh, machine, uh, we are not going to take further details except uh, for configuring the interfaces. Because by default, this uh, virtual machine will be equipped with uh, six interfaces. We are going to use only the first uh, two interfaces uh, for the admin training. Uh, for the expert, there will be a need to use three, the first three interfaces, where the third interface will be used to connect the virtual servers uh, as uh, DMZ servers. Now, since our virtual machine is now uh, imported, you can see that I have six interfaces. Uh, in fact, they are, they are uh, counting from uh, network adapter. It's not showing as one, but from one, two, three, four, five, six. So the first one is unique because when it comes to our, the firewall, it will be mapped with the uh, physical port number one, which is also the out interface. And we have a lot of details to uh, discuss about later on. But for now, all you need to do is to connect the first interface with the VMNet1. Now, VMNet1 VM is the one which is connected to the external, to your Ethernet. If you remember, it's a bridged. And this interface, you can choose to be connected at power on. So by default, this interface will be connected. Second interface and the rest of interfaces also, you will, see, you will be seeing that they are not actually connected on power. Uh, in our case, we will also choose to make uh, Network Adapter 2, which is the in interface, the second interface, to be connected. But this time, we will be connecting this interface to VMNet 2, which is the host only. 
Now, uh, for the admin, there's that's it for the firewall. If you are also uh, doing the expert and you need to, uh, the expert training I mean, so and you need to uh, mount the virtual uh, servers for the testing to be uh, connected on a DMZ, so in this case you need to use the VMNet3, okay, and uh, VMNet3 will be connected with port number 3. For now, there is no difference for us. Uh, if you choose this because it's not going to be active because we did not choose to make it connected however the most important thing is that to have network adapter 1 to be connected with vmnet 1 and also we need to make it connected at power and also the network adapter 2 to be uh, connected to vmnet 2 and it's connected to uh, connect at power on so that's the whole thing that we need for the firewall and the second thing is that uh, the uh, DPN server which uh, actually uh, you can see that it comes with a PDF that explains the details how to implement it but however I will just show you how so I will just import this one on the standard uh, directory as well uh, this is a machine where it has an uh, auto run uh, script that will ask you to which company you belong so it will help you to configuring the uh, servers which is the DNS, the mail and the FTP server and the web server to the right uh, subnet of your uh, network so for now uh, we will just simply need to run the machine and also provide the uh, choose uh, the interface we have only one network interface and uh, during our admin training all what you need to do is to connect it to VMNet2 so I will choose here the interface and vmnet2 it can be connected also to vmnet3 where we are separating it from the host and it will be only accessible uh, from the uh, this is actually an, an, uh, an example that uh, we are going to test during uh, the training so but for the beginning I just need you to have it on the vmnet2 so we can test uh, them directly from the laptop not through the firewall we will also get more details for now you just need to follow these instructions just to prepare for the training that's it so we are uh, now uh, ready to go with the training uh, following these instructions will uh, make you uh, ready for uh, performing all the practice labs and uh, I just uh, want to highlight one point since you are using a virtual uh, machine and multiple virtual machines in fact on your laptop uh, so it means that uh, we just need to make sure that please to disable the Windows firewall and uh, antivirus or any endpoint protection you have in your laptop during testing because this may uh, prevent some uh, testing from going on uh, it might be blocked by the endpoint protection or antivirus or Windows firewall so just for the sake of uh, easing the labs we uh, kindly ask you to during the practice and I will also uh, should remind you of that during the training is to disable it uh, I hope uh, these instructions are clear uh, you just need to be ready uh, fully focused and uh, prepared for the fun so see you soon in the training and thank you for watching this video